Welcome. Okay, so guys, let me just um, let's just get us back on track. So I've brought Leanne in so that we can uh, talk together tonight on how it is that health coaching and homeopathy combined help you to get your very, very best outcome um, and not only be able to lose uh, weight, but to lose stubborn fat, all right? And also that in, um, in doing so that you begin to unravel the other symptoms that you're experiencing that come along with fat so that you can feel your very, very best. Because I tell you what, for some people, they, they lose weight, and I've been in this camp, and I I feel like I get to where I want to be, where I'm happy with the way I look, and look, I just don't feel awesome, okay? And um, and so part of the thing that you got to understand is that fat is a symptom of many other symptoms that you're experiencing. Fat and excess body fat does not come on its own, especially not the stomach kind. And so just getting familiar with this concept of being able to um, address, the, address the underlying cause of why you have some in fat is really the key to be able to lose it successfully um, and be able to keep it off long term. So that's why I've got um, Leanne, Leanne on here tonight because I believe that the answer to that is in an, without a doubt, 100% without a doubt, a combination of health coaching and homeopathy working together hand in hand and addressing uh, your your all of your symptoms as a whole addressing you as a whole okay yeah. so you know if i was to look at the two things that i believe are required in order to lose stubborn fat the first thing is is that you know without a doubt you've got to be able to stick to a meal and exercise plan that takes into account your body type all right so what is the what and when I say body type, I mean that, like how you're displaying your body fat. Is it around your midsection? Is it around your legs, butt, and thighs? Does it does it just come on everywhere? Have you got a fatty roll underneath the bust? How is it presenting? All right. And if you because if you cannot stick to a, a meal plan, if you cannot stick to a meal and exercise plan, look, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you're going to be like this, off and on off and on, off and on. So we've got to find one. You've got to be able to find one that you can adhere to. Now, part of adhering to it, right? Part of adhering to it is is that um, you're able to move through the things that cause you to fall off, all right? And then when you do fall off your plan, right, and you aren't able to feel inspired or motivated enough to keep going, you've got to be able to address, address whether the reason you fell off your plan is because of a physical block or because if it because of an emotional block, all right. And when we identify what the blocks are that cause you to not be able to keep going, to be able to keep going forward, when we be at, when we're able to identify those, um, it'll help you to continue to to keep trucking along, right? To keep yeah. to keep on keeping on, and that is ultimately what is required in order for you to get there. Now. In doing so, you've got to make sure that the plan that you are following addresses the underlying hormone imbalance, right? Because this is primarily what is the the problem um, that this is primarily the problem that you have. What you're seeing is fat, and so you think that fat is the problem, but the actual problem is this underlying hormone imbalance. So, from a health coaching perspective, that's what it takes: adherence to a, a meal and exercise plan that caters to your body type one that addresses your underlying problem, which is a hormone imbalance. So Leanne, I want to ask you from your perspective, from a homeopathic perspective, what do you think it takes in order to okay. address and lose some in fat? Well, you know, it's, it's complicated. It's many layered, but you're definitely right in the two points that you're saying. And for me, uh, I was thinking about this and, um, you know, actually what's required is a feeling of safety in the world and a feeling of peace. And what do I mean by that? Mm. Uh, we can kind of coat ourselves with a, a nice big jacket of fat, and um, especially if we're not feeling safe. And when we're not feeling safe, we're feeling vulnerable, maybe a little bit threatened, and it comes in different ways. You know, it can come because you've got a really busy lifestyle and you're just running from one thing to the next, and the body's so primal, it will uh, it will interpret that stress as I'm not safe. And right. so it can't, or there's a lack, if there's a lack of time or a, 
um, a lack of money or whatever it is, then uh, the body will interpret that as a bit of a famine and then just mm -hmm. stack on the weight. Okay. It's so primal. It just interprets stress in you know, one way or the other. Yeah. Am I going to get long and thin, thin mm -hmm. or am I going and lean and strong or am I going to get overweight? Right. And, and, so, and keep you safe. And so you're saying that, it, that, like, how does that affect a person at a hormonal level? Yeah. So on a hormone level, mm -hmm. uh, if you're – the, for safety, it's definitely around the kidneys and the adrenals. And, of course, right. the adrenal gland sits on top of the kidney, and it's our happy hat. And uh, that's the one that puts out the adrenaline and the cortisol. And so um, when you're under stress and you're not nurturing yourself, you're not looking after yourself, which is a real trap that our busy mums and working mums can really fall into, right? Yeah. Um, that's where we start to get um, all of those hormones being pumped out all the time and running on adrenaline. And then we sort of end up with, um, uh, you know, we're not, then we're sort of running out in the fact that we get really tired as we come down off that adrenaline high. So we chuck back the coffee and the stimulants. Mm -hmm. And adrenaline forms a triad in the hormone balance with estrogen. Um, so it kind of, forms all of these balances it affects the thyroid if the estrogen ends up out of balance because the adrenaline's a bit out of balance then that's going to affect the thyroid eventually over time so the hormone balance is really delicate right um, and it's easily okay. knocked out of balance yeah right and so let's just say let's just say in a scenario right a woman decides that she's determined anyway right despite her circumstances and despite the fact that she feels unsafe and um you know, and, and busy and rushing, you know, mm -hmm. despite that, she's so incredibly fed up with her situation that she just steamrolls over that and decides that and puts herself into a, a situation where she's following a meal plan and uh, an exercise plan that forces yes. the body to, to lose weight, but the environment is still not a safe one. What, what are the consequences of that from your perspective? Very difficult to lose weight. So this is when the woman's walking eight blocks a day or going to the gym and doing really strenuous exercise. But hang on a minute, our adrenals are already stressed. So mm -hmm. sometimes uh, matching the exercise to actually what the body's needing is, you know, really handy. So very often in my clinic when I've got these busy working women um, holding it all together and constantly under this <gasps> adrenal kind of stress and that feeling mm -hmm. of fluster. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'll actually give them as homework to go to yin yoga and yep. kind of uh, do some beautiful poses that really nourish the meridian lines and the actual adrenals and allows the body to regenerate and replenish and feel deeply relaxed. And they'll lose weight, even though all they're doing is sitting on the floor or on their <laughs> back for three minutes per pose, and then they change <laughs> pose and they're just breathing and they will start to lose weight. Yeah. Now, guys, I just want to put in a, a, a little side note there because – if you're just sitting down on a yoga mat and that's all you're doing, you will not lose weight, okay? It's not going to happen. If life, if it were that simple, we'd all be sitting on our yoga mats chanting, okay? It's not yes. that simple. You do need to be in a calorie deficit. However, however, you can still be, you can still have the intent to create a calorie deficit. And if there's too much cortisol flooding through the bloodstream from being in this and this rushing and, and, and feeling unsafe and this primal that you're talking of, Leanne, state, you, your body is just not going to create an environment where it feels safe enough to lose weight. Okay? That's right. It's going to feel and under threat. It is. It is going to feel under threat. And what I've seen is, is that cortisol, when it's in the bloodstream like that and the adrenals are pumping, you know, has a direct effect on the, on the thyroid. And I have yes. seen women who have just force their body into a state to lose weight right the weights the weights coming down and they and they if the weight manages to come down in that state they think they're winning but the feelings of anxiety and being a, and then being able to maintain the weight is just a tall tall order that's right right yeah and yep, then maintenance the point? and then what was the point you put you put yourself yeah. through all of that and then what was the point? Because at the end of it, you still don't feel your very, very best, right? Yeah, that's right. So, so you're going to retract back to where you were before, if not worse. So it's, it's key that you, that you take into consideration from the, from the hormonal perspective, 
the, the strategies that you're putting in place to lose weight. All right. And then, and also put into, into place, um, the idea that if you're not, if you don't put, if you don't, uh, get your uh, hormones into balance, if you don't get cortisol, adrenaline under control, you uh, are going to be uh, basically pushing crap uphill. Is that about how we describe it? Yeah, right? I would say. And, yeah. you know, it's good that you mentioned cortisol because the other cause that I see when people can't lose um, weight is the um, inflammation. And sometimes... Right. That's as simple as they're not getting enough sleep at night. They're not relaxed enough to go to sleep at a proper time. And so they're not getting the cortisol reduced overnight as they should. Um, so, and that just leads to more inflammation. And there's lots of other causes of inflammation. That can be anything from, uh, you know, a bacterial imbalance in the gut or a genuine allergy or, um, you know, all sorts of other things. Okay. So let's just say, let's take, for example, that we have, because I'm going to say that it's very, very, uh, typical that at the point that I uh, that I have reached a woman, she's already at her wit's end. Okay, mm -hmm. she's already she's already like been try had had tried to uh, lose weight time and time again. All right, and to the point where she's where it's become a priority because she's so exhausted. All right, now yeah, that's right. now I put her. I would put her on a, a meal and exercise plan that is uh, that first of all creates a, an environment where stress is low. Okay. So really, really making sure that before we even get into uh, creating an energy deficit and anything like that, that we get the, the environment correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So from, from a homeopath, homeopathic perspective, what is the first thing that you would do when I send her to you? What do you do? Okay, so when someone comes to see me and you've referred them, uh, yeah, and they say that they're extremely anxious and rushing and adrenals are pumping. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so for me, I need to, apart from the fact of getting all their physical symptoms, um, the key areas that I'm looking at is the hormones. And mm -hmm. I'll always ask a period about, uh, ask a period, ask a woman about their period yeah. um, and their cycle and mm -hmm. all the symptoms around that. Um, and uh, so that's one key area. Sleep is very important for me to find out what they're doing around sleep when they're like, waking. Like, are they sleeping? sleeping. <laughs> yeah, if yeah. they're even sleeping. And the yeah. times that they're waking. So different yeah. times that you tend to wake in, in homeopathy actually indicate different medicines. Okay. So this is how we begin to get into the subconscious. If they're lying there unable to get to sleep, then I would want to ask, well, why is that? What's going through your head? And then we begin to start to get into their worries and their fears and the things that are stressing them out. Okay. Um, so also be looking at their history and traumas and things like that. Right. Okay. So in that, that's a really, really good point that you bring up because, you know, when it, if for those of you who are watching, I'm going to suggest that either you or someone you know very closely has tried to lose weight. Okay, if you're a woman, I'd be very, very surprised if you haven't tried to lose weight before. And you probably didn't address it in this way. But if you think to if you think back, you could pinpoint when your weight started to become a real problem. And I'm not talking about when you started to get a little bit, you know, a little bit chubby. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when did it start to become a bit out of control? Okay. When did it start to take to make a steady incline upwards? And I can almost always pinpoint some kind of trauma or acute stress event, some kind of highly stressful situation, right? So some examples may be that uh, there's been a death, right? Um, it could it could even be not not as tragic as a death. It could be that someone is that that they're looking after someone sick, right? It could be that they are not feeling uh, like they are. Uh, working towards their life purpose and they just don't know what it is that they're doing with their life. It could be that, and they're going through a bit of a crisis in a, in a, in a career change. It could be that someone's moved from, from one city to another or one country to another and has had to leave behind loved ones and relationships, whatever it is. It could, it could even be not tragic at all. And there could just be a pregnancy right yeah oh my gosh right. just a, huh. and a singular event and, and pregnancy is beautiful and, and 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 all of that but it's still really stressful on the body 
right? So we can almost always pinpoint when weight started to become out of control to a to an event, right? Now, you guys tell me, how does that not how is that not relevant to unraveling your weight loss picture? How is not addressing that not relevant? Of course it's relevant, right? And so, you know, when so Leanne, just as an example, right? Let's say I send a woman to you, she's gone through some kind of trauma, all right? And yeah. um, and grief is the underlying uh, thing there, right? Maybe I point to that because that's what it was for me. Yeah. What 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 is it? What are some examples of some of some sleep issues that someone would have that has a, a underlying uh, base of grief there? Okay. Well, that's really interesting. One of uh, one of our um, main key remedies for grief and long held grief, you know, um, is actually they'll go to bed and it's really hard for them to fall asleep. They'll be brooding, and they'll be thinking over and over. Oh, I can't believe they said that or they did that or I can't believe that happened to me and they'll be brooding and brooding and brooding and thinking of things that are kind of almost long past um, and that indicates a particular remedy there's um, uh, other ones with grief it depends how the person has um, interpreted the grief or internalized the grief so if it's grief with anger you know they right. could wake up and they're quite angry or they might wake up in the middle of the night and again the time will be key and um, and then, you know, when you can't get back to sleep, you start thinking and there'll be a certain theme to the thoughts. Those are the sorts of things that I'm interested in finding out because they will, when we explore that, we'll point to the remedy, you know? Right. And those are the types of things that I need to have resolved when I'm working with you. Right. Yeah. Guys, if you cannot sleep, right, because of something that is consuming your thoughts, if it's keeping you up at night, if you're awake and you don't even know why you're awake, you know? Yeah come the, the passing weeks and 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 you're not able to move forward right through and, and and you're not getting results because you're just too tired right it's just of all the things that you've got to deal with in a day you just added losing weight and getting your health on track into the list of things that you have to accomplish but also you're not sleeping like how in the hell are you going to stick to your plan long term right yeah. motivation peaks at the beginning of the day right, and then takes a steady decline down as you get to the end of the day. If you get to the end of the day when motivation is low and then also you're, you're, you are running off of an accumulated sleep deficit, I mean, yep. that motivation is just, gonna, is just going to wane as we get later and later on in the week. So that is just one example of how it is that we work to having, having it resolved with sleep. I have a lot of it. I think almost everyone that I send you has some kind of sleep problem. Yeah, well, and also, or is not uh, sleeping yeah. to the way that they want to. That's right, and and also, mm. if your hormones are out of balance, it actually really affects sleep. So I know as I've gotten into my oh, mid forties, I'm having hormone changes, right? And mm -hmm. I know when my hormones are a bit out of balance, I'll just wake up in the middle of the night and I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I could be an owl right now, you know? So I'll just be sitting there. Thing, awake and and there is just no chance of me going back to sleep maybe for a couple of hours and yeah. uh and i know oh, oh hang on my hormones are out there's not particularly anything bothering me i'm not overstressed but uh -huh. it's just ping so yeah. again that's all times uh that tells me a lot in home because if you come and you say oh look i'm awake between two and four or i wake up at 4 30 every morning and i'm thinking about work and i can't go back to sleep those are all um remedies Perfect. So the body will show us what it needs in a really unconscious way. And you're right. If you don't start getting that sleep happening, then you just, there's no, no chance of going on to losing weight. You're going to keep relying on stimulants. Very, very tough to get the hormones. Yeah, balance. yeah, which is a bit of a catch-22 because you need the stimulants to get by, but you know that the stimulants are not helping. So that you got to just, you know, you get, people just yeah. get stuck in this vicious circle of just surviving, right? And it's really yes. not... And, and really what they want to be is, is thriving, but it's very difficult to get out of that when there's not a clear solution, when there's not a real clear path to surviving. I mean, if I tell somebody that they've got to stop drinking coffee and coffee is their survival mechanism, I, I mean, what am I going to, I've yeah. got to be able to replace that with something, right? So Absolutely. It, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tall order to just, to just come, come and tell somebody to cut coffee out of their life. 
So sleep's one of them. What's another one of the ones that have uh, that come up often? Um, okay. uh, as reasons for not being able to lose weight. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so there's the there's the overstressed, and then doing all the other things that keep stimulating that. There is the uh, the lack of nourishment and the lack of creativity. So often okay. when I see that the thyroid's out, um, mm -hmm. the thyroid is about how do I express myself authentically in the world? How do I express who I really am? And so, hi, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. So many people um, are not busy expressing who they are. And especially, again, that busy woman, the busy mom, she's too busy looking after the kids. And she doesn't realize that actually to keep the family really well and happy, mom has to attend to her own needs first. It's okay to be selfish. Right. So these are some of the things, uh, the factors around lifestyle balance and um, uh, and causes that eventually degenerates into ill health. And when something's going on with thyroid, you know that you've leaned into that for quite a while. That's not something that necessarily happens overnight. Mm -hmm. So it can take a little while to lean out of it. But that's what I love when my clients are working with you, Taryn, because um, they're getting to the nitty gritty quicker and yeah. getting that mentorship that they need. Yeah. Yeah, and that's um, and that's really what it's about. Because look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know that fundamentally to lose weight, you've got to be able to stick to the plan. I keep saying that, but if you can't, if you can't sort out the other things that are consuming your thoughts, you're not going to be able to stick to the plan. Sticking to the plan will just become a low, a low, a low priority, a lower yeah. priority. So let's say, from my perspective, with someone who has this issue of not being able to, um. Uh, how, what were the words that you use? Speak their speak their truth. Speak their truth. Okay. Express their authentic self. Yeah. Ex okay. So, you know, when I'm working with that, I'll have someone who's very reserved and 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 inner, right? And when someone when someone is real in like that, they find it really really difficult to talk to to let me know what else is what else is going on in their world. Right, because yeah. all because they get really tunnel visioned and tunnel focused, and they find it really, really difficult to think that there could be that not being able to express themselves could possibly be related to them not being able to um, adhere to a plan. But when that happens, a person thinks that losing weight is going to solve their problems. A person feels like what they really want is confidence because that's what they're lacking, but actually. Yeah you know, like losing weight does not solve the problem at all, right? It, yeah, it, it's so on true. The, it's on the way, like if you address the real, the real problems what's ha with what's happening, happening there hormonally, and if you're able to address the other symptoms that come along with that, what, you're, what you'll find is, is that that will start to unravel and also you'll lose weight. Do you yeah. see the difference? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So... Let's move into the next one. So, um, two two things that cause a person not to be able to stick to their plan. Well, I think that we've already really gone into that. The, to summarize it up, it's really about what are the physical blocks or the emotional blocks that will cause someone to not be able to continue to move forward. So we've talked about some of the emotional ones. I want to touch just a little bit on some of the physical blocks, all right? Because, um, you know, if, for example, someone is in actual pain, this is another reason that could be extremely um, uh, unmotivating to have the desire to move forward because you can just be, when you're in pain, it just, mm. you know, it could be niggly or it could be debilitating. Okay. So let's say, Leanne, that I have someone who has a, a, a past injury. All right. So they really, uh, what they've found is that in the past when they've had success, it's been because they've been able to um, move and exercise well. And um, and moving and exercise well helps them to adhere to their 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 meal plan. It's mm -hmm. a bit of a, a it works hand in hand there because if they are able to move and feel good, then they're also it inspires them to keep going with their their meal plan. But if someone is, does not feel good moving, mm -hmm. right, because they're in pain, right? From my perspective, I know how I address that. From a nutrition perspective, I really want to get inflammation down as fast as possible. 
Yes. Right. And so I've got to look at what are the things in your current diet that are causing the most inflammation and the and mm-hmm. and then what are the things in your lifestyle that are causing the most inflammation and then just eliminate the ones that we can eliminate easily, perhaps what you're not aware of, and then significantly reduce the others as much as possible to take that edge off. Okay. So that could be things like just becoming aware of becoming aware of the the ratios of um, of food that you're eating. So are you over consuming sugars and, and simple carbohydrates? Are you getting enough uh, essential fats in your diet? So are you com- yeah. are you combining your meals very well? How frequently are you eating? Are you going too long without meals and essentially like just getting too busy with the other things that you're prioritizing in your day? Like, you know, I get often I forgot to eat because I was so busy, right? What yeah. are the things that that are that are that we can do to reduce inflammation from from a nutrition and exercise perspective? Leanne, from your perspective, when I send someone to you who has had an injury or is in pain, what can you do yeah. for them? Okay, so if someone has an injury or they're in pain, uh, because I'm always looking at the symptoms, I'm looking at what is. Uh, their unique symptoms around that injury, if it's back pain, what's the sensation, where is it, where does it extend to, what makes it worse, what makes it feel better. Uh, And I take all of that and I'll put that into, uh, I'll analyze those symptoms and and see what remedies match most of those symptoms. But always, 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 it goes back to when did the injury happen, what was going on in your life at the time, and... um, uh, and often, sometimes an old injury will actually have gotten better and then reappear later on under some times of stress. So right. all of that is really interesting information for me. Mm-hmm. And so the nature of the stress and will often match and like we'll have the same remedy that matches the sensation of the pain. And uh, and then when we give that, it begins to hopefully heal. And sometimes if there's mechanical injury, where it can't be healed. Um, it's just a, a a real damage to the body. Mm. Um, we can we are sometimes able to alleviate that pain and ease yeah. it a little bit, right? Yeah. So um, and and it's so interesting because uh, injuries in the body and those physical dense tissues they really hold some of our deepest traumas, our cellular memories, our um, our real upsets from the past. So it's mm. very, very interesting when I'm dealing with yeah. back pain, actually where that leads me in that person's life. Yeah, right. It's interesting that you say that because I watched a show uh, a little while ago and it talked about a woman, um, I can't remember what movie it was off, um, the, uh, Baby, Dirty Dancing, right? right. And um, okay, so Baby from Dirty Dancing, what, most people don't realize is that she was in a really bad car accident like the week before dirty dancing was was um launched right Mm. and in the car accident and she was the driver the um the mom and kid in the other car they died oh wow yeah yeah and she had and she had a really uh, terrible neck pain that she just couldn't uh, get fixed and she had it for years and years and years and anyway, part of the solution, what what it came down to was is the guilt. She was just yeah. holding on to terrible, terrible guilt, right? Mm. Now, I can actually recall a few times where I've been injured and not being able to, uh, and and having had met you, knew that I could come to you to to, to help me to, to fix my injury so I could get back to training faster, right? Because in the past, I would have this recurrent pain and it would be mm. in my right subscap or was it no my left subscapula and it would start from having tight hamstrings and from me just getting sloppy and stretching right and uh and you know it's when you just you you, you're getting into the the love of exercise and you know you should stretch but you just that you you get a little bit too rushed and you just don't stretch properly and that happens too many times and your hammies get tight which just travels up the back and it was hurting my subscap and then left unattended, what happens is it would usually travel up into my neck and cause my neck to become really stiff. And Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's just so crappy. Even something just as simple as that could take someone out for a week, right? And And if a person is like debilitated like that and not able to move freely, 
just a week is long enough to demotivate someone and have them feel derailed from their plan, right? Totally. So you, gave, you gave me a remedy for that. You, you slipped me a wee remedy and I was back to it the very next day, right? Yeah. I thought yeah. I'm going to take it slow and I'm going to just go for a walk and see how I feel, right? Like five minutes into the walk, I'm like, I can run. And I was right back to it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, and this and this and this feeling that I would get in my in my hamstring that would move up to my subscapular and then into my neck, it was it was often I had this pain yeah. often, and um and so what I've noticed is is that when I would get that pain, I would I have had it less and less often, yeah, right to the point where I actually don't even remember the last time I had that pain, and, and that actually guys, I'll get. I'll get clients that come to me and they have injuries on the same side of the body or, um, or for instance, they have had whiplash that um, in the past that's affected them. And the remedy for whiplash um, is the same remedy of having an alcoholic father. Right. Right. So it's, um, you so know, it's really that, interesting. So you're saying that the, that there's an emotional and a physical connection. Always, almost always. Yeah. yeah. So and so, even, so, so the difference when you alleviate pain this way is, is that not only do you get the physical shift where you feel like oh, injury free and you can move your neck, but you also feel lighter as if like a weight has just been lifted off you and you can't really explain why that is, but you just feel better, right? Yeah. Like energy is just flowing freer through the body. That would be the best way that I could explain it. I think, I think a really good example of this is when I give a great remedy in the clinic and mm -hmm. someone goes home and those boxes of clutter that they've had around the house that they've never been able to get into and they just look at and it weighs them down, they'll have a good remedy and that clutter is gone in like right. a day. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that took so little time. And it's because I give a remedy and they change their vibration. They've, they've thrown off stuff in their own emotional body, physical body, and now their environment doesn't match that. And so mm. they have the energy to change their environment and make it a match. And I think that's the same with weight. I think it's a good analogy. You have a yeah. good remedy and you're not holding on to that old anger, that old hurt, the old pain, nothing. And so what happens is the body can go, okay, good. Well, we don't need to hold on to that bit on that thigh and we can get rid yeah. of it. Yep. Yep. Actually, that just reminds me. And I won't say her name because I haven't gotten permission. And I'll ask her if she'd be willing to come on for an interview one day. Um, but you know, she had a lot of anger, right? This is the client we worked with together. She had a lot of anger from her past and she knew that it was, it was affecting her ability to lose weight because her weight had fluctuated as the stress would reappear into her life. And you treated her, uh, you treated her specifically for that. And, um, I get a message saying, you'll never believe what just came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And the toilet bowl was filled and it was black. And she said it was like a cork had just been lifted, like had been unplugged from her body. And what came out of her was just black. Right. And she was like, I don't know what that means, but better out than in. Right. Yeah. And, and often a good remedy, you know, um, the bowels start moving and peristalsis starts moving and uh, people will go home and they'll have extra bowel motions and it, but it will be really great. We actually can pack a lot of stools and things into our abdomen and carry them around with us. So, yeah. um, you know, the so what you're saying is clear. that someone could lose like a kilo just in a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Quite absolutely. Literally. Yeah. Easy to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, look, so basically how basically how it works is that you have done that, Wendy, multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is that, you know, when you're when you're losing weight, right? You can either be losing weight and be feeling great and mm -hmm. as you continue to lose weight, you just feel better and better. And I don't just mean better and better as in you have more energy, right? Because at the end of the day, you know, if you were to slip up on your eating um, or, um, you know, eat, uh, not follow your meal plan for a little bit and those symptoms are going to come back, right? What you're, mm -hmm. what you're feeling the effects are of are just eating clean, okay? Now, there are great positive and beneficial 
physical feelings that you will get and you will be able to think clearer as your body loses its addiction to sugar and refined foods right so when you eat a more wholesome diet you will feel better but I'm not just talking about that kind of better right I had a conversation today with a woman this beautiful lady and the one of the reasons why I love her so much is because we both share a passion for parenting and she said, you know what, it doesn't, I've, I've lost a lot of weight, Taryn, but I just cannot imagine how it could be possible that I would lose weight and not feel anxious. What oh, yeah. a life would be, what, what kind, what, I couldn't imagine what a life would be like where I don't feel anxiety. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, you know, as long as that is in your life, you will not be able to maintain your weight or the chances are very, very slim. There's that safety thing again, right? If you're feeling anxious, right. you're not feeling safe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've gone through some of the uh, emotional blocks <clears throat> and we've given a couple of examples of a physical block. And um, what I would like to do is um, on our next sessions, do some case studies. So we're able to have a look at um, some more examples of what these emotional blocks and what these physical blocks um, actually look like and how our clients were able to move through them and, um, and feel better. Um, Leanne, I just want to ask you just a couple more questions uh, before we yeah. wrap up. Um, but, you know, since you have, since I've uh, been working with you and I've been able to, and I've been sending my clients to work with you, I know hands down, without a doubt, I have been able to get the best, some of the best results that I have ever been able to get before with my clients because not only am I, you know, um, looking at the success that they're getting from a physical point of view and from the fact that they've lost weight, but I'm most interested in is their well-being improving? You know, is their yeah. life improving? Because I know that what's going to help with them being able to keep the weight off, right, mm-hmm. is as if their life also improved and um, and their ability to be in it um, improves and the people yeah. around them improve because they have, you know, women are, are pretty powerful. I'm just going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, but most of the women I talk to don't realize that they are the, the, the center, the glue that keeps a household yes. together. They the literally control the feeling, the tempo of a household. Yep. And the ripple effect that that has on the family and on the kids and on the marriage and on the extended family, when a woman, when a mom, a wife, a woman feels, feels content yeah. is like incredible. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's incredible and it's incredibly powerful. So um, Leanne, what, ha- what are some of the challenges that you've had when you are working with clients right when um who aren't working with someone like me okay so uh when i have clients that don't work with you or aren't working with a health coach Mm. the uh the issues are i don't have the time in the consultation by the time i'm like a dog with bone and i get all the uh different tiny little symptoms um down about all their physical symptoms and their emotional past and all these stresses and how they respond etc etc there is mm-hmm. no time uh, for me to mentor them about lifestyle and um, eating management. So the question that a homeopath will ask, uh, I'll ask my clients, for instance, um, what do you really love to eat? I don't care if it's bad or good for you because my clients will actually launch into giving me a, a history of their food diary. And, oh, no, we have, you know, we have lots of fruit and we have lots of vegetables. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the kids are good at this. I'll say, hey, what's your favorite food? And they'll say to me, oh, I like lolly. And the mother goes, and broccoli. You know, and it's like, <laughs> and, yeah, it's actually, that's useful for a naturopath. It's not useful for me. If they yeah. want sweets, that goes down as a symptom, yeah? I yeah. don't really care whether it's broccoli or sweets, but I just yeah. want to know what it is that they love. So right. um, I, there is no ability I can mention, okay, maybe we should reduce the sweets and maybe we can replace with this. But then I have to move on just so that I can get all the symptoms down and prescribe yeah. in that time period. And... Uh, and so when they're working with someone like you, they're getting that extra mentorship. And the other thing is, uh, I'm not very good at making someone book in straight away after I see them, because I never know how long a remedy might last. 
for that person. So they might take a remedy home and it, I might have just nailed it in one and they might be on that remedy for six to eight months and do really, really well. Mm. And so they don't need to see me again for a long time. But then there's other people that actually need to see me quite regularly and it depends how chronically sick they are. But I mm. never know when I prescribe. So it's always about just let me know, stay in contact with me, yeah. let me know if anything comes up. And mm. sometimes because if they're new to homeopathy, they don't understand that mm. the runny nose that they've now got is actually to do with the remedy. Yeah. Or is actually to do with their response to the remedy or their body's showing me something. Mm. Or um, the fact that their mother-in-law is now really annoying them and that's coming up more and more for them um, mm. since having the remedy. That could be that that's actually the next layer showing up and I yeah. need to really see them again. So sometimes they don't think about that. It's just life. It goes on and they forget. Mm -hmm. um, but when they're seeing someone like you, you're able to identify really beautifully when they need to come back and see me. And at the same time, you're catching and supporting them in between and holding them mm -hmm. accountable. I yeah. don't have time to hold them accountable that I would yeah. really like to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it's, uh, so for me, it's really special because uh, working with you because I know that the client's are really well looked after and I also don't have to worry so much about the case management and the fact of, uh, because I don't have time to follow up with all my clients. How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, it's kind I rely of like, on them to contact me. Yeah, it's kind of like a um, like a situation where you would go and see your GP, right? Yes. Like when does your GP ever give you a courtesy call? Yeah. Right? Like maybe once in your whole lifetime, like on a good day. Mm -hmm. If you have a relationship through them, through generate, through family generations and they're old, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, because they just don't have time. No, I started out in my business and I'd ring everyone and they'd say, oh, this is so lovely that you called. And, you know, and my doctor never does this, but I just <laughs> don't have time anymore. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's really lovely because sometimes you can't pick up when you're stuck. And having someone like you, Taryn, who has that eagle eye outside view and yeah. can identify it for them and go, hey, now it's time to go and do this um, is really, really important. Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, it's, it's, it's a little bit fun for me because I feel like a little bit of a detective. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you know, guys, what Leanne's talking about, right, just from from my perspective is when it comes to addressing the the – the cause okay think of it like an onion so you've got the core of the onion yeah. right and this is where leanne wants to get at this is where i want to get at you can get to the, yeah. the core right then you have addressed the underlying problem and that's what yeah. you want to have addressed but you cannot get to that core without getting through the symptoms right like a like yeah. an onion and so what happens is is that you've got a really good remedy right and correct me if I'm wrong, but a really good remedy cuts through like multiple layers at a time, right? Yes, yeah, so it will unpeel you fast. <laughs> right. And yeah. that's great. But sometimes, sometimes there's got to be like a, a peeling back of a few layers. And mm -hmm. sometimes that takes multiple remedies, right? Yeah. And I can see that because just through the experience of working together and now that I treat my whole family homeopathically for everything, right yeah. i have learned i've tr i've learned to train my eye to look at symptoms in a similar way that you do right and it's yeah. like like how you mentioned i don't care if you're having bro if your favorite food is broccoli or lollies what is the symptom yeah. because we know that yes. if we can look at symptoms it it gives us clues as to what's going on with the body it's not any kind of you know uh judgment call about anything it's actually literally yeah. just what is the symptom so so, you know, Leanne does not have time to, to give you, to give my clients courtesy calls and, you know, they, they literally, what needs to happen is, is that I'm there in there with them, checking in on them. How's it going? What's the remedy doing? What did you feel? Yeah. How many doses have you taken? Da, 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 da. Okay. It's time to go. Have you let Leanne, have you let Leanne know that? Oh, I need to, but I just haven't got you need to let Leanne know how yes. many more doses, you know? Oh, there's that symptom come up again. You need to take the remedy for that. Do you remember the remedy that she gave you for that? You need to take it again. Oh, do I? Yes, you do. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like a, a growly, scary detective. Hey, Vicky, I received that. <laughs> but, you know, it, it literally, I remember, um, and I can talk about Jane because she gave me permission 
last week, but I remember with Jane, you gave her a remedy. You told her take this, uh, take this Ignatia and take it for uh, 10 days or however many days you told her to take it. And so I'm writing mm -hmm. that down. And then I'm journaling the week and recording the week that she took it. And it just so happens to be the week that she is uh, in, it, you know, the, a week that she would be premenstrual if she was menstruating, right? So like a cyclic yeah. week. And I record that down. And as the symptom comes up again and represents, we've passed that 10 days you've prescribed for, but I'm like, Jane, there's that symptom again. Remember That's the it. remedy she gave you for that? You need to take that again. And until yep. that remedy has done all of its work, right? Until all the juice. Exhausted. We want to get all, all the juice the, out. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that is one of the classic examples of how me as a health coach and Leanne as a homeopath, this is how we dovetail together and work together to peel back those layers of the onion to get to your core. Okay. And move through the challenges quicker, right? So right. because literally because they are being told, okay, it's Leanne and then you can help them work with everything that they are now unpeeling and they've got the energy to stick to things. Um, they're moving through their challenges and having big breakthroughs faster, faster right. than they do just singly or yeah. on their own. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, because actually one of the classic things that I've seen with women is is that women tend to really own and and where whereas whereas you look at things as a symptom and I've learned to look at things as a symptom. Most women will take that on and take it personally and make it a personal trait of theirs. This is just me. This is who I am. This is the way yeah. that I just act about things and the way that I am. And I'm like, it's bloody not. It's a symptom. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah, it's it, it's you're you're not that. You're not the the person who just has an all or nothing mentality. You're not a person who who is, this is just the way that I do things. And I've, I've always been someone who just hasn't been able to follow through. I'm always, have always been someone who just hasn't been able to f finish what I start and da, 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 da. It's not, it's not, it's a symptom. It's all stories. <laughs> yeah. It's all and stories that we create to support our own illusion, right? I, I've actually begun to understand that we're all mad. And everyone that comes into the clinic has their own brand of madness. And all it is is stories that we've all built up to support yes. our view of reality. Idea. Yeah, to support yeah. the view that you hold of yourself. Okay. And some of it is useful and some of it is really not useful. Right. And it's the not useful stuff that homeopathy helps to clear. To get rid of. Right. Yeah. And then you can yeah. move forward. Right. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. So yes, that we can get sooner. to the next layer of the onion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky, what did you say there? Taryn loves to hear symptoms. The more graphic you are, the more excited she gets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I know what that means. That's why <laughs> I know what that yeah. means. Okay. All right. Well, guys, we're going to wrap it up for tonight. Great to have you on again, Leanne. Next week, um, we're going to get into uh, body shapes. All right. Why does a person hold on to fat in certain areas and uh, the organs and glands that are responsible for that? And awesome. what does it mean when you are adrenally fatigued? And how do yeah. we get to the bottom of that? And how do we address that nutritionally? And how do we address address that homeopathically? So Leanne are going to be on. Leanne and I are going to be back on here next Wednesday night, same time for episode six of the Southern Yay. Fat Facebook Live, uh, and. I'm so looking forward to uh, to seeing you guys again. And if you have any questions, if there's any pressing questions or things that you have that pop up that you have um, a, a desire to know about or, you know, mm. something there that you wish for us to talk about, post it in the comments because um, we'd love to unpack that for you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thanks right. for having me, Taryn. All right, Leanne, catch you later. See you guys later. All right. Bye. See ya. See ya.